I'm Kayla Holloway. Um, I'm actually making a nitric oxide and hydrogen peroxide sensor. So it's basically DNA wrapped single wall carbon nanotubes. So I'm going to be detecting hydrogen peroxide and um, nitric oxide in different cells. So the first two things I'm doing is actually synthesizing two different types of DNA. So AC15 is the DNA that works to detect nitric oxide in the cells and then GC15 works to detect hydrogen peroxide in the cells. Really the value of these sensors is that they're involved in a lot of different pathways in the development of cancer as well as the treatment of cancer and the regression of cancer. I have my GT15 right here. This is the original concentration and then I'm diluting it so we can use it for the um, fluorescence machine. And I'm going to do the same thing for AT15, make another dilution. In my lab back at Howard, I work to synthesize silver phosphate um, nanoparticles and encapsulate them in polymers. So I actually have experience working with nanoparticle synthesis. Right now I'm working on the synthesis of the sensors and we're going to test its response to hydrogen peroxide. So we're going to measure the fluorescence intensity if the peak either increases or decreases once we introduce hydrogen peroxide to the sensor. Um, and then later on down the line, we're going to actually start working with cells and see how the sensors work inside the cells with hydrogen peroxide. I take the samples that I diluted and then I put them in cubettes, glass cubettes, and then we can place them inside of the machine. Um, and then the computer has software that can analyze it and measure the absorbance. And this is uh, one of my graphs for one of my samples. This is for the AT15 sample at different wavelengths the sample can take in different amounts of light and that's what the different peaks are. The absorption spectrum basically just allows us to see how different subtypes of the carbon nanotubes detect light differently or absorb light differently. Then we can further test that with the sensors to see which one works better for either the hydrogen peroxide or the nitric oxide. And the goal of this project is ultimately that with patients we can be able to get an answer as to whether a treatment is effective within a matter of hours or days as opposed to what patients currently have to do is wait weeks or months to actually see physical size changes of the tumor burden. So after we do the absorption spectroscopy, we actually take the sensors and we measure the fluorescence and how it responds to the hydrogen peroxide and the nitric oxide. And that's one thing that I'm learning new this summer, how to use the fluorescence spectroscopy machine. I'm going to be making a 3D tumor model, which is really cool too.